This episode is brought to you by Genesis Network. With business alignments with the NBA, the Genesis Network gives you all the blockchain services and products in one spot, like an NFT marketplace protecting artists' copyrights, eliminating all problems caused from lack of protection and security in the industry. The private sale starts April 25th at just 22 cents with only 5 million tokens available, and the public sale starts May 1st. Visit genesis.network for more information. Link in the description below. This my two Satoshis. This my two Satoshis. Who need two cents when they can get double from stacking Toshis? Yeah. Yo, what's up? What's up? This is Dr. Little John from a G perspective with my two Satoshis. We're gonna do a breakdown of this limited edition Bitcoin 2022 Arculus key card, the next generation cold storage crypto wallet with three-factor authentication. We also gonna set it up. Before we get started on the uh, Arculus tutorial, the unboxing and then setup. I thought I'd stop here and speak on a few things just to make sure that you've got a, the simplest understanding as possible about a few key components that go towards the Arculus wallet and what it's designed for. For those who, who already know, just bear with me. I'll keep it brief. But you may learn something or you may hear something that will allow you to explain it to uh, newbies a lot easier. So the first thing is there are two types of addresses there are two types of wallet addresses. Um, there are two types of keys, a public key and a private key. Your public key is the, the address that you give out to people so that they can um, transact with you. Um, so they can send you Bitcoin, they can send you cryptos, but they can't reverse that transaction. They can send you a message but only the person with the private key can open that message. Only the person with the private key can sign a transaction under that public address. So that's just to keep it simple. It's a, a public is a one-way communication. The private key is a, a two-way communication because it creates public keys, but it also signs transactions. Um, so in, in, in speaking on that, there are, there are a few different ways that you can store um, your crypto or your private keys. And there's hot wallets and there's cold wallets. So hot wallets are like websites, browsers, they may be apps. And what that means is they're hot, it means that they're always connected in some form or fashion to the internet. Even if you do have passwords and, and, and maybe you do uh, uh, have your 12 uh, seed word or 24 seed word, it's still connected to the internet, so therefore it's far more vulnerable than something that isn't. But not only that, there are some hot wallets that are custodial, meaning that you don't control the keys of the value that you're given within that website, browser, app. And then there are some that are non-custodial, which means that you control the keys to that ledger entry, that public address, but it's being hosted on an app or a website or a browser. Now, cold wallets are completely offline. There may be times where they're connected to the internet, whether it's through a browser or whether it's through an app or uh, something to that effect. But for the most part, it's offline. Whenever you're done with the transaction, it's offline. There's no, there's no circuits, there's no electricity, there's no power that's being transmuted to that device. Um, and they come in different forms. Uh, they're, they're as simple as a paper wallet, which I wouldn't advise that because that's for the very technically savvy, so we won't get into that, but just know that exists. Uh, there are also hardware wallets. And hardware wallets are devices that hold the private keys and they don't, allow the private keys to leave from that device to go onto the internet. Hardware wallets are a multitude of different type of electronic devices that have circuits or they have chips in them that hold the private keys. Um, they're an electronic device that can talk to a program and tell a program that it has the right to sign for whatever value is inside a public address. And the protocols and systems know that only 
or the blockchain and nodes know that only one private key has the access to controlling that public key. And so hardware wallets are the most effective way to store digital assets offline. And they have a whole host of complexities. There's a whole host of different types. Some of them work slightly different than others. Some of them are what they call air gapped, meaning that when you turn it on and use it, it's not plugged in to any other device such as your phone, your apps on the phone, a, a browser, your computer. Uh, there's no cords, nor is it Bluetooth. It only spits out QR codes and then you do a, trans, you do a, a, a few steps of QR codes back and forth from each device and then it does its confirmation that way. That's just a simplified uh, explanation. And then you have some that are that speak to those devices through Bluetooth or through a wire. And so there's different security protocols and reasons for both of those. Um, and then there's just simply having your 12 or 24 word seed and putting it in a steel plate like a keystone or you know having it written down somewhere. And you can have it written down in multiple places. You can have hardware wallets with the same private keys on them with the same value amount placed in a multitude of different locations. You can have each of those hardware wallets have separate values. You can have hardware wallets where it takes more than one private key to sign for a transaction and those are called multi-sig, meaning that there's multiple signatures or multiple electronic signatures that are required to assign for a transaction. But the, but the fail safe is when you've lost those devices, you've lost your phone, you've lost your computers, as long as you still have those 12 or 24 words, then you can recreate the value that's on that ledger anytime. And so that's why those steel plates are so important. The best OPSEC, the best operational security for holding those metal plates is don't hold them in the same area or the same locations where you have hardware wallets or where you have the hardware wallet that belongs to or is associated with those seed words, have them in separate locations. And you can have more than one. So that's just a quick rundown before we get into the unboxing of the Arculus wallet and uh, the setup. So I just wanted to make sure you had a, a, a brief understanding of how that works and you can kind of apply that. And of course, it's, it, there's far more complexities and there's layers. You know, there's, there's a multitude of layers in this space. You just start knocking the layers down. It's, it's never ending. So anyway, let's get into this Oculus setup. As you can see, it comes in this box. And these were given out at Bitcoin 2022. I've got one. They come with a seal, so you've got to tear this off. I've got one that's already been tore off, so I'm not going to just keep tearing off. It pulls out kind of like this. And it comes with some information. The card says the Arculus key card stores your private keys and authenticates you with the Arculus wallet app, providing a simple and secure way to store, send, receive, buy, swap your BTC and other tokens. There's some other documentation here. Terms and conditions. Of course, your 12 word seed. You always make sure that you're writing down your, either, your, either your 12 or your 24 words. Remember, not your keys, not your crypto. Here's a cool little Arculus sticker fit right in your wallet pocket allow for you to use short-term bitcoin or crypto carry it on you but have it secure and then when you want to use it you can always transfer it from off of here to other hot wallets but it'll allow you to carry some of your crypto some of your bitcoin i see it for a cool carry around storage for your bitcoin and the cryptos that they do offer rather than carrying your hard wallets around with you at some point we reach a point where our hard wallets our traditional hard wallets will be for storage that you don't really plan on looking at for a while that inheritance storage and devices like this will be for us to carry enough Bitcoin or cryptos around with us to do trades when we see fit to do small deals, do purchases when we see fit, but not have it online, have it offline, secure, while at the same token, not having to carry around a ledger treasure with significant Bitcoin on it. So it's a good concept. I think these fit ideally with the OPSEC operational security that we should be striving for, especially in this digital era the biggest honeypots will be in our digital values 
So I see these Arculus wallets as not your primary necessarily. I think the traditional ledgers and treasures and Ellie Pals and things of that nature suit better for that inheritance money for that Bitcoin that you don't plan on looking at for a while, that Bitcoin that you plan on utilizing it as property. In the meantime, what do you function with concerning your Bitcoin or cryptos if you want to do some incremental trading or you want to purchase something or you want to do a business deal, loans, the decentralized financial tools that we're building, any of those things that you'll have the ability to do, you'll want to do it on something that you can pull from but is secure, something that's not always online, something that's a cold wallet but not having you carry around your ledgers with significant portions of Bitcoin. Also, just the complexities of some of the other wallets. It's not They're not meant to be necessarily convenient at the time. And I think in some ways that's that's a, a benefit, even though a hassle. But these here, they're far more easy to use, simple to carry. So you could literally transfer at any given time from this being a cold wallet to a, a hot wallet to do a transaction, to do a trade, to do a loan, just a whole host or a multitude of things. So I, I think these are convenient and I think they fit within that, that aspect when it comes to OPSEC. There are three or four simple steps to get this wallet up and cracking. And of course, the first thing is we need to download the app. So let's see if we can get the website to come up. There we go. Okay, as we can see here, the website, you scroll down, downloading the app. Then you tap the phone. You tap your card to your phone, depending on what type of phone you have. And that will set up the wallet. And then you'll create a six digit pin and then it'll give you your 12 word recovery phrase. You'll re-enter those words to confirm that you have them correctly. And then after that, wallet is up and running. So let's go through those steps now. Let's install the app. Okay, let's open the app. So now it's asking me to get started. So we see here the Arculus, buy, swap, and store your crypto. Get started. So let's tap, accept the privacy or terms of condition and the privacy policy. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna tap the card to the phone. We're gonna create a new wallet. So now it's asking me to create a pin. This may not show up on the screen recording for security purposes. Did a previous recording and I saw that it didn't show up. So that's kind of a good thing. Not kind of, it is a good thing. So anyway, let me uh, create the pin real quick. Okay, I'm confirming the pin that I created. Okay, so now it's gonna ask me to tap my card back mm -hmm. to the phone and hold it there. So now it's creating a wallet. You may not see it, but it's spinning around and it's saying creating a wallet. And it's saying, please keep device attached to the card for up to a minute. So it's still spinning and saying creating a wallet. Okay, so it's created the recovery seed. I've written down the recovery seed. Asking me, did I write down the recovery seed? I did, I hit that. And so now it wants me to confirm the correct recovery seed. So let me go ahead and input that. And you're just tapping the words in the order that they were given to you. Okay, so I've inputted the 12 words and I'm gonna confirm, boom, you're all set up. And of course there's no balance because there's no Bitcoins or any other coins there. And from here you can go and you can add coins. You can go in and flip these on or off and they don't have every single coin. And they say they will be integrating more coins. But if you've been in this space, you know that often projects take a little bit of time to integrate different aspects but this is not meant to do everything all at once like I said this is for you to be able to carry some Bitcoin or crypto around with you and know that it's in its securest form but convenient as possible while you're on the go this is not for your whole stack so if you look here you apply so now you have Bitcoin and USDC in the wallet and of course has all the things that you're accustomed to receive and send you can swap the wallet's good to go you can add the biometrics and you can add the currency designation of your choice. You know, of course you have the dark and light theme. And then you can also restore a new card, new wallet, easy setup. If you've been around long enough, you know that it doesn't get any easier than this. Just to give a comparison or example with the Arculus and other types of hardware wallets, you've got the Jade, the Ellie Pow Titan, Ballot, and then the uh, Ledger Nano X. So this is just to give an example. Of course, these aren't all the hardware wallets that exist in the space, but these are some of the more known and they've been around, they've proven themselves. But uh, this is just to give an example in comparison to these. You know, any of these could be carried with you, of course, but just the example of keeping these maybe at home and maybe carrying this. Of course, operational security when it comes to your digital assets can be simple or it can be as complex as you want it to be. The key thing is that you do have some operational security. And of course, the first thing is always maintaining your 12 or 24 word seed in several different secure 
places and if possible ingraining them into these metal plates I don't have any here with me but there's these metal plates that you can ingrain the 12 or 24 words into and then you can place those in different places the optimum way to go about that would be that those plates would not be in the same locations that any of your hardware wallet would be in but to start out it's just good to write down do not copy on your phone computer make sure that you are away from computer screens camera screens or anything of that nature when you write down your 12 or 24 words and write them down in more than one piece of paper initially and put those pieces of paper in different places maybe put them in plastic bags to at least prevent them from a water damage and then at some point in time you get the steel plates and the steel plates protect against fire and other types of damage so this is just an example and a comparison yo to those who hung out to the very end i hope this was helpful much appreciated don't forget the thumbs up subscribe this is dr little john from a g perspective enjoy the rest of the view peace i'm out Telling those lies.